access your free language gifts right now before they expire. First, the Having a Party PDF Cheat Sheet. With this cheat sheet, you'll learn words and phrases like, would you like a drink, guest, dessert, and more. Second, must know phrases for rejecting invitations. This one minute lesson will teach you phrases like, sorry, I already have plans, I'm tired, and more. Third, summer plans conversation lesson. Go travel, relax at the beach, stay at home and sit on the internet. You'll learn how to say these and other summer plans in your target language. Fourth, must know Father's Day vocabulary. Can you say Father's Day in your target language? You'll be able to with this quick one minute vocabulary lesson. Fifth, the summer season writing workbook. With this printable PDF, you'll learn all the must know summer words and phrases. And you'll be able to practice writing the phrases out as well. Download it for free right now. And sixth, tired of apps that just teach you random words? With our innovative language learning app, you learn through conversations and start speaking in minutes because our conversation lessons are just three to 15 minutes long. Learning is that easy. Download it for free for the Android, iPhone, and iPad. To get your gifts and language learning resources, click the link in the description below. Download them right now before they expire. Hi everyone, I'm Felice Angelini. Ciao a tutti, sono Felice Angelini. Welcome to another Italian whiteboard lesson. In this lesson, you'll learn how to tell someone your phone number in Italian. Let's get started. When giving phone numbers in Italian, we say each digit separately. So first, let's take a look at how we say the 10 single digit numbers in Italian, from the smallest to the biggest. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Now again, but with English, try to repeat after me. 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 1, 1, 2, 2, 2, 2, 3, 3, 3, 3, 4, 4, 4, 4, 5, 5, 5, 5, 6, 6, 6, 6, 7, 7, 7, 7, 8, 8, 8, 8, 9, 9, 9, 9. Next, let's go over an example conversation. Imagine someone is registering your phone number in an office. Il suo numero di telefono, per favore. Il mio numero di telefono è 999-56-20-314. One more time, a bit slower. Il suo numero di telefono, per favore. Il mio numero di telefono è 999-56-20-314. Tre, uno, quattro. Ok, let's take a look at the dialogue. First, the request. It's a formal request. We have suo. Your phone number. Il suo numero di telefono. So remember, for a formal conversation, we use suo. 
And uh, this request is a polite request. So it's very important to say, per favore. Per favore at the end or per favore at the start is the same. And then, well, giving your phone number in Italian, you say, il mio numero di telefono. Mio, in this case, my, my phone number. Il mio numero di telefono. Then the verb essere, to be. E, 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 it depends on the topic. Numero, so e, is. Then the number. When giving your phone number in Italian, say each digit separately. After each group of digits, include a short pause, like uh, 999, 56, 20, 314. Okay, now let's look at two more examples of giving your phone number in Italian. Here is the first one. See you if you can say the numbers. Il mio numero di telefono è 999 67 55 3 2 1 Ok, and the second one? Il mio numero di telefono è 998 3 2 4 4 3 2 2 Well, the pattern to give your phone number in Italian is Il mio numero di telefono è Il mio numero di telefono è Phone number My phone number is Phone number It may be useful to become familiar with some of the most common Italian phone number prefixes. For example, uh, landlines in Rome start with uh, 06 and in Milan with 02. Mobile phones have a three digits prefix, usually starting with three, such as 349. Toll free numbers usually start with 800. Do you remember how to say one? Uno. Uno. And how to say two? Due. Due. Do you remember how to say three? Tre. Tre. And how to say four? Quattro, quattro. Do you remember how to say five? Cinque, cinque. And how to say six? Say, say. Do you remember how to say seven? Sette. Sette. And how to say eight? Otto. Otto. Do you remember how to say nine? Nove. Nove. And how to say zero? Zero. Zero. Do you remember how to say phone number? Numero di telefono. Numero di telefono. And how to say my phone number? Il mio numero di telefono. Il mio numero di telefono. 
Do you remember how to say my phone number is 999-5620-314? Il mio numero di telefono è 999-56-20-314. Il mio numero di telefono è 999-56-20-314. Well done! In this lesson we learned how to tell someone your phone number in Italian. I'm Felice and I'll see you again on ItalianPod101.com. Thanks for watching! A presto! Quello, per favore. In the next minute, you'll be challenged to ask for something in a store. First, let's look at some examples. Questo, per favore. Quello, per favore. Questi, per favore. Let's practice. Sei in un negozio. Vuoi un prodotto lontano da te? Ordinalo. Prego. How did you do? You can consider this practice exercise successful if you were able to answer in the given time, completed a pattern with an item, and use the sentence pattern featured in this example. Quello, per favore. Try this practice exercise again if you want to improve your fluency or skill in any of these areas. Scusi, avete il sale? In the next minute, you'll be challenged to ask if a store has something in stock. First, let's look at some examples. Scusi, avete il latte? Scusi, avete la frutta? Scusi, avete lo zucchero? Let's practice. Sei in un negozio. Chiedi il sale. Sì, è qui. Ora chiedi il latte. Sì, è qui. How did you do? You can consider this practice exercise successful if you were able to answer in the given time completed a pattern with an item, and used the sentence pattern featured in this example. Scusi, avete il latte? Try this practice exercise again if you want to improve your fluency or skill in any of these areas. Quanto costa questo? In the next minute, you'll be challenged to ask the price of something. First, let's look at some examples. Quanto costa questo? Quanto costa un caffè? Quanto costa una torta? Let's practice. Sei in un negozio. Chiedi il prezzo di un prodotto vicino a te. Costa 2 euro. Sei in un bar. Chiedi il prezzo di un caffè.
costa un euro. How did you do? You can consider this practice exercise successful if you were able to answer in the given time, completed a pattern with an item, and used the sentence pattern featured in this example. Quanto costa questo? Try this practice exercise again if you want to improve your fluency or skill in any of these areas. Hello everyone, welcome back to ItalianPod101.com. My name is Desi. Mi chiamo Desi. Mi chiamo Desi. And in this video we're going to check together some Italian jokes. Barzellette italiane. Barzellette italiane. First of all, let me spend some time on the term joke because there are actually three words that literally translate into joke in English but that have slightly different meanings in Italian. The first one is scherzo. Scherzo. It does mean joke, but it's more of a prank of something that I do to you or not only that I say, okay? Even though when I'm talking, I could just say, ah, dai, stavo scherzando. Ah, come on, I was only joking. Stavo solo scherzando, I was only joking. Stavo scherzando, I was joking. Also, people could ask me, ma stai scherzando? Are you joking? Which is kind of aggressive, I understand that. <laughs> but yeah, it's like to say, are you insane? Kind of. Stai scherzando? Are you for real? But also, let's say I'm hiding something from you and I tell you, haha, le, well, let's guess what it is, blah, blah, blah. And you're like, no, no tempo per questo scherzo. I don't have time for this joke, which is a prank, right? Second word is battuta, battuta, which is more of a line, I'd say. In fact, it's used in cinema as well and theater when an actor has a line that's called battuta. Ho dimenticato la battuta, I forgot my line. But also, it's something that you kind of say back. In fact, battere also means to beat. So you beat back, you say something back. And that's a battuta. I'd say it's something unprompted, so that comes up naturally, that makes people laugh. If it does make people laugh. Because sometimes there's also una battuta di cattivo gusto. A bad taste joke, cattivo gusto. There are also freddure, freddure, that are not properly meant to make people laugh because they're black humor jokes. Freddure comes from cold. Then we have barzelletta, barzelletta, which is something said especially to make you laugh. It's like a story, a funny story that is supposed to make people laugh. Not only here too, but still, that's what they're meant for. Barzellette. That being said, let's see some barzellette together. They have some pretty specific targets, I'd say. <laughs> Three characters that mostly always come up are Pierino. Pierino. Pierino is a fictional name used for stories, especially those for kids and told by kids. When you have, like, you can even make up a story and use Pierino as the protagonist. Pierino dice a papà. So Pierino says to his father, Se prendo dieci a scuola, mi dai dieci euro? If I get ten at school, which is the maximum mark here, because it's from one to ten, Se prendo dieci a scuola, mi dai dieci euro? If I get ten in my exam, would you give me ten euros? And the father says, e il padre risponde, sì, certo, yes, of course. Then Pierino says, Pierino dice, allora sei fortunato, perché ho preso cinque. Like you're saving up money, thanks to me, because I only got five. Which in Italy is not even the bare minimum, that's six. So yeah. Is this supposed to make people laugh? Probably, they can giggle. But anyway, this is the kind of barzellette that Pierino is involved in. Another one, for example, il fratello di Pierino, Pierino's brothers, chiede, asks him, perché salti? Why are you jumping? Perché salti? Perché ho dimenticato di agitare lo sciroppo prima di prenderlo. Because I forgot to shake the syrup before getting it. You get the idea. 
The second target that is often there are carabinieri. Carabinieri. Now you may know or not that carabinieri is, let's say, a side group of police. They're kind of a special force task uh, that is used especially for public safety. So sometimes people make fun of them, saying that they're not the smartest because they're not even like real police, but it's just an inside joke, I'd say. For example, if a carabiniere goes to a doctor and he says, mi fa male qui, qui, ma anche qui, and qui, he goes like, it hurts here, here, but also here and here, and then the doctor says, il tuo dito è rotto, your finger is broken. Or again, two friends talking and one says, Ieri mi hanno rubato la macchina. Yesterday, my car got stolen. Did you go to Carabinieri? Sei andato dai Carabinieri? Because that's where you're supposed to say that something like that happened. Sei andato dai Carabinieri? Certo, ma dicono che non sono stati loro. Of course, but they say it wasn't them. Now, don't let me explain jokes, just take them as it is. You could even change the category with anything else, basically. And then the third character that is often a target is la suocera. Suocera. Mother-in-law. This is commonly accepted, like even when mother-in-law and son-in-law or daughter-in-law have a good relationship, there could still be these kind of jokes going around because they're just like part of tradition and culture at this point. Because as you know, the mom figure is really present in the family, even if it's not her family, but the sons or the daughters one, they're still there. In fact, this became kind of an outlet to release frustration in the couple. For example, Gianni, ieri nel tuo giardino ho visto un serpente. Gianni, yesterday, in your garden, I saw a snake. Ho visto un serpente. Oh, thank you, Mario. Oh, grazie, Mario. Dirò a mia suocera di andare a prendere i fiori. Oh, thank you, Mario. I'll tell my mother-in-law to go up pick up the flowers. Or, tesoro, hai visto il mio libro? Darling, have you seen my book? Which one? Quale? Quello che si chiama Come vivere cent'anni. The one called, titled, How to live a hundred years. Come vivere cent'anni. Ah, sì, l'ho buttato. Oh, yeah, I threw that away. Ah, sì, l'ho buttato. Why? Perché? Perché tua madre lo stava leggendo. Because your mother was reading it. So yeah, those are the basic barzellette in Italia. You can make up your own or even just change the subject and adapt them, but there are plenty of them. Now, let me know in the comments which characters are usually the one targeted for jokes in your country. Also, if you haven't done it yet, remember to subscribe for your free lifetime account on italianpod101.com. Thank you for watching. I'll see you soon. Bye-bye. Ciao, ciao. Hello everyone, welcome back to italianpod101.com. My name is Desi, mi chiamo Desi, mi chiamo Desi. And in this video, we're going to talk about what happens in September in Italy. Settembre in Italia. Settembre in Italia. I know this is a tricky one because sette means seven in Italian. So I know this makes you think of July but actually it's September, so the ninth month of the year. September in Italy is still quite warm, actually, and a lot of people still take vacations and have the, their first holidays, actually, sometimes, because as I told you in many other occasions in Italy, there is either uh, companies closing for the whole month of August, or you can choose or actually like try and trade your days with your colleagues in order to have the vacation period that you prefer. So some people go in June, some in July, and some in, in September. The thing is that it's the first two weeks of September that it's still pretty crowded everywhere, because then in the middle of September, everyone goes back to school. Si torna a scuola. Back to school. Si torna a scuola. Basically the 15, but it depends on the year, of course, but the third week of September, 
is when everyone goes back to school not universities actually because university starts again in october 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 but for the rest yes so families still go around in the first two weeks of september which are low season so it's gonna be cheaper also not super hot but still warm enough i mean you can go into the sea <laughs> for example so there's still a bit of vacanze holidays vacanze especially al mare al mare at the sea but also montagna montagna mountains and in particular cities le città città d'arte cities of arts because then it's easier to go around because it's not super hot actually it may not be the best time for everyone to go on vacation because some students do have debts to collect, if that makes sense. We call it debiti, debiti da recuperare. Debiti da recuperare. So if you didn't actually fail, but you weren't the best in some subjects, okay, I think it has to be two or three maximum, then we say, okay, you go to the next year, but in September, before starting the new year, you show me that you did actually learn what you were missing. And that's why we call it debito, debt. And this is one reason that adds actually to the others for visiting and traveling in Italy in September, early September, because it's not too hot, but it's not cold yet. There's not too many people around. Students too have to be at school and it's cheaper than the rest of summer. Another reason to go around in September is that it's full of festival and sagre festivals and sagre it's more like fairs meaning that it's more historical and typical of some specific places okay for example you can see a lot of traditional things in this month there is la regata storica di venezia regata storica di venezia the first sunday of september there's this historical race of Venice, which is, of course, with gondole, gondole and gondolini, which is smaller gondole, while gondolieri is the people that ride the boats. And here you can see gondole decorated addobbate a festa, so decorated for the party. Another event worth mentioning is la partita di scacchi viventi, La partita di scacchi viventi, so living chess play, this one too in Veneto, but it only happens the second week of September of odd years. So something really rare, actually. There's also a lot going on with food in that month, in September, because this is a good month, since I mentioned it's not too hot or too warm, to have people going around, but also not food actually rotten <laughs> like if you keep it out too much to show people in september it's okay -ish, but people are still willing to go out to experience things it's not too cold and they just want to be inside so it's the perfect time in fact you can find the real famous sagra del peperone sagra del peperone in piemonte in piemont in carmagnola it's the sweet pepper festival you can find it giallo yellow rosso red green, verde, or arancione, orange as well, and all the dishes made with them, actually. In Lombardia, so around Milan, you can find la festa del gorgonzola, gorgonzola cheese festival. I wonder about the smell, yeah, never been there. <laughs> Going more to the south, in Caserta, next to Naples, you can find la festa del fungo porcino, so porcino mushroom festival. And also going southern and southern in Calabria at Diamante, Diamante location, which is Diamond, literally. In Calabria, you can find the hot chili festival. And they also have a contest with challenges, trying to see who's the one who can eat more without dying, basically. And that's called peperoncino, peperoncino. That's hot chili, hot pepper. It's super red, and I know that a lot of people take it just also as a lucky charm for their good luck. Even if you don't eat it, just take it. Don't eat it if you're not a fan. I know that they're really, really spicy. 
That being said, I hope that I gave you enough hints to enjoy September, September in Italy. So please like and subscribe. And if you want to have real Italian conversations with native speakers, click the link in the description and download our PDF lessons. Thank you for watching. I'll see you soon. Bye bye. Ciao ciao. Hey everyone, welcome to the monthly review, the monthly show on language learning where you discover new learning strategies, motivational tips, study tools, and resources. By the way, all the lessons and bonuses you're about to see can be downloaded for free on our website. So click the link in the description right now to sign up for your free lifetime account. Okay, today's topic is the power of specificity and knowing what you want. If you don't know exactly what you want from the language you're learning, then chances are you might fail. Sounds harsh, but it's true. In fact, not being specific with what you want is the number one mistake beginner language learners make. And that's why today you'll discover how being specific transforms you into a better language learner, how to change your learning approach and speed up your progress, how to apply these tactics with our learning system, and much more. But first, if you're looking for new free language resources and downloads, here are this month's new lessons and resources. Be sure to download these now before we take them down in a few days. First, the Having a Party PDF Cheat Sheet. With this cheat sheet, you'll learn words and phrases like would you like a drink, guest, dessert, and more. And second, the Summer Season Writing Workbook. With this printable PDF, you'll learn all the must-know summer words and phrases, and you'll be able to practice writing the phrases out as well. To get your free resources, click the link in the description below right now. They're yours to keep forever. And here are this month's updates for our language learning system. Learning pathways now include a journey widget, which shows your overall language learning progress, the next item widget, which shows you the next lesson to take, and your overall grade for the pathway. Just access one of your learning pathways on your dashboard to see these changes for yourself. And there's also the brand new Help Center to help answer and resolve any issues that you might have. Just click on Help Center and FAQ down in the footer menu of the site. The power of specificity and knowing what you want. Part one, the power of specificity. Think back for a second. Was there something you really wanted to buy when you were a kid that you had to save up for? maybe a game or a toy, chances are you eventually got it. And the main reason you were able to get it is because you knew exactly how much you needed to save. And it was a matter of time until you saved up for it. So what does this have to do with learning a language? Well, because you had a specific price to aim for, you were being specific about what you wanted. This kind of specificity is a powerful way to reach almost any goal, including learning a language. How exactly? For example, think about the kind of New Year's resolutions that people set every January. Resolutions like, I want to learn a language, or I want to become fluent. These goals tend to be very vague and unrealistic, right? And these same people quit one week into January. But it's much easier and faster to reach more specific goals. Goals like speak for three minutes in your target language, or learn 100 words in a month. Why? That's because you define the progress. You know exactly what you're looking for. Three minutes, 100 words. Kind of like the price of that one thing you really wanted as a child. So having that specific number in mind is crucial and you'll always think about it. You'll always know how far off you are and when you'll hit it. Whereas becoming fluent someday, well, what does that even mean? And how would you even know you reached it? It's hard to be obsessed with a goal when there's no specific point to aim for. So without a specific number, you'll never know what you're aiming for. And this brings us to the second point. Part two, the power of knowing what you want. Do you know what you want from the language? Think about that for a second. You might be tempted to say, yes, I just want to speak and understand everything, but you're still being vague, which is the number one sign of not knowing what you want. And the truth is, most beginners don't know what they want from the language either, aside from some vague goals. They'll get a textbook, download an app, and watch YouTube videos, just passively take things in, but their progress will be slow. 
They're not looking for anything specific, so nothing really sticks except for a few words. But let's say you wanted to know how to introduce yourself in that target language, so you know what you want. And then it's just a matter of mastering all the phrases for introductions. You'll learn it fairly fast. Same thing if you want to be able to talk about your family. Same thing if you want to master a specific grammar point that you still don't quite get. And once you've mastered this specific piece, you can go on to the next one, and you end up mastering more and more of your target language, all because you're being specific and know what you want. Now, all of this sounds simple, but it's not a beginner tactic. It's something that comes to you with time and experience. As mentioned, most beginners don't know what they want and rely on their apps and textbooks to guide them instead. That's just how we all learn as beginners. We don't know enough to start asking questions. But there are ways you can start being specific and intentional about your approach. Again, one of the best ways to make progress in your target language is to define what that progress is and be super specific about it. For example, learning 100 words in a month, speaking three minutes in your target language, or mastering a specific grammar point so you can use it freely in conversation. And the reason for that is, because you have a specific goal or number, you know exactly what to look for, whether it's reaching 100 words or three minutes. And without a specific number, you'll never know what you're aiming for. So if you want to get a bit more specific with your learning, here are a few things you can do. Part three how to apply these tactics. One, set small, measurable monthly goals. For example, learn 100 words in one month. Finish 30 lessons inside of our learning pathway in one month. Send one message a day to your Premium Plus teacher. All of these are specific. Two, ask questions and note down specific points you don't quite get. The fact is, you'll always come across words or grammar patterns that you don't quite get. So note them down and ask questions whenever possible. This will help you come up with specific items you'd want to tackle or master within the language. You can always ask us in the comment section of the lessons or your Premium Plus teacher if you're a Premium Plus member. Three, similar to number two, if you're learning with an actual teacher, always prepare a question to ask, even if you can't think of a good one. This puts you in the habit of being proactive and looking for specific points you want to learn, clarify, or practice. Otherwise, it's like coming to class, taking notes, and leaving, and then forgetting it all later. Four, take time to think about what you'd like to accomplish specifically with the language. For example, if you're learning for a specific reason, like travel, then give yourself specific goals, like learn how to ask about prices or ask for directions. It doesn't have to be anything big. In fact, the smaller and more specific it is, the better. If you want to learn the language but are still struggling with making time to sit down and learn and making language learning a routine, there is a quick two-minute solution to your problem. The two-minute hack for learning and easily sticking with it. And in this guide, you'll discover one, the two-minute rule and why that's all you need to get a routine going, two, how to learn the language in just a few minutes a day, three, which language tools you can use, including free ones, and much more. But first, if you don't yet have access to our language learning system, sign up for a free lifetime account right now. Just click the link in the description to get your free lifetime account. So, why are two minutes all you need to get started? First, you may already be thinking that two minutes aren't enough to learn anything. And you're not wrong, but that's not what the two minute rule is all about. The two minute rule comes from the book Atomic Habits by James Clear. And the way it goes is, if you want to form a new habit or routine, you should do it for just two minutes a day. Why? Well, those two-minute rules are all about practicing showing up and making language learning super easy to start. So pick something easy that you can do for two minutes, and we'll reveal a few ways you can learn for just two minutes in just a bit. If you can show up and put in two easy minutes consistently, you now have a routine that you can improve upon. Now you can learn a bit more challenging things past those two minutes, and now you have a solid routine going. In other words, the two minutes act like a gateway routine. 
Do the easy stuff for two minutes. If you can master showing up and doing two minutes, then you can move on to the more challenging things like grammar, reading, or drilling vocabulary. But if you never master showing up, you'll be like the millions of language learners that set a New Year's resolution and failed it three days later. Now, how can you put in just two minutes a day? If you're learning with our system, you can. This is a free service that sends you new words every day, improves your vocabulary, and you can easily spend two minutes reading through the word, the examples, listening to the pronunciation, and saying it out loud. Not quite two minutes, but it comes close. Our three-minute lessons are a lesson series for absolute beginners, where you learn conversational phrases in just three minutes and start speaking the language right away. And you'll find the pathway for these lessons in our lesson library. Just look for vocabulary lists in the vocabulary drop-down menu on the site. You'll find hundreds of lists for common topics like greetings, talking about weather, everyday life, must-know phrases for conversations, and much more. And you can spend two minutes picking up new words or saying them out loud. The dialogue tracks are 10 to 30 second tracks with just the lesson conversation. So if you wanna to listen to native conversations or just review a conversation from a previous lesson, you can easily spend two minutes listening to one on repeat or several and train your ear and get accustomed to native speech. We email out freebie cheat sheets every month, so if you're on our email list, you should be getting them. And just spend two minutes reviewing the words and phrases on the cheat sheets. These cheat sheets are a great way to learn a bit of language in just a few minutes a day. So, if you want to learn the language and get access to these learning tools and our learning system, sign up for a free lifetime account right now. Just click the link in the description to get your free lifetime account. If you're learning the language, then you already know that space repetition flashcards help you learn words fast. But what if you used them for phrases and sentences too? You'd be able to speak way more because that's how we all speak, through phrases and sentences. How to boost your conversations with spaced repetition flashcards. And in this guide, you'll discover how to do just that. You'll learn where to unlock hundreds of free phrase lists, how to master phrases fast with spaced repetition flashcards, and bonus learning tricks built into our flashcards. But first, if you don't yet have access to our language learning system, sign up for a free lifetime account right now. Just click the link in the description to get your free lifetime account. So, if you want to master sentences and phrases for conversations with spaced repetition, the best places to start are our free vocabulary and phrase lists, which you can find in the vocabulary drop-down menu on the site. Just look for lists that contain phrases such as the 10 lines you need to introduce yourself, top conversational phrases, daily routines, and much more. Then select all the phrases, click Add Selected Words to Flashcards, and then New Deck to create a flashcard deck for these phrases. You'll need premium access or a free lifetime account with our free seven-day premium trial. Now, in the same vocabulary drop-down menu, go to Flashcards, and you'll see your deck. Just press Study to start drilling the phrases. And the way spaced repetition flashcards work is, they track your progress and space out your learning over time. So if you know a phrase now, the flashcards will show it again in two days, then four days, then eight days, and so on. Once you're done with a study session, that's it for the day. And all of this takes just a few minutes. Then your flashcards will remind you when to study again and start introducing new phrases while spacing out the ones you already know so that you never forget the phrases. And so you're actually mastering the phrases that you can use in actual conversation instead of just learning words. With our flashcards, you can test yourself on how well you can remember or produce the phrase, read it, or understand it. So, if you go to settings, you can choose from 
listening comprehension, where you hear the phrase and the goal is to see if you understand it, production, where you see the translation and the goal is to see if you can remember and produce the phrase, and recognition, where you see the phrase in the target language and the goal is to see if you're able to recall the meaning. You can pick one, two, or all three. Practice multiple skills to get the phrases to stick even better. So, if you want to learn the language and get access to these learning tools and our learning system, sign up for a free lifetime account right now. Just click the link in the description to get your free lifetime account. If you want to learn the language fast, there are some little known learning hacks that you can use with our system. Five learning hacks that you didn't know about. And in this quick guide, you'll discover one, how to understand and pick up on every word with the read along method. Two, how to improve your speaking and pronunciation with one tool. Three, how to immerse yourself in native dialogues and much more. But first, if you don't yet have access to our language learning system, sign up for a free lifetime account right now. Just click the link in the description to get your free lifetime account. Ever listen to a conversation between native speakers and wish you could follow along with a transcript? Well, you can. In fact, listening and reading along is a popular learning hack for mastering a language. You pick up on every word, you improve your listening skills, reading skills, and engage multiple senses at once, which improves recall. And you can do just that with our lessons. On every lesson page, you get the complete word-for-word -word transcript to read along with. Shadowing is another popular language learning trick, and it's where you repeat what you hear as a way to improve your speaking skills. So as you're taking our lessons, you can shadow the lesson conversation, and you can do this easily with the line-by-line -line audio dialogue, which breaks up the conversation into individual lines. Just press play on the audio to listen and then repeat. You can also use the pronunciation practice tool to compare yourself to native speakers. Just press the microphone icon, record yourself speaking the line, and then you can hear how your pronunciation compares to the native speaker. The dialogue tracks give you just the conversation of the lessons, no translations, so that you can review the conversations without retaking lessons. And if you're learning with our app, you can just set the dialogue tracks on autoplay and immerse yourself in different types of dialogues, boost your listening skills, and drill all the conversations into your brain. Just go into the settings on the app, and in autoplay, make sure autoplay is on. Turn on dialogue, turn off the other tracks, also set play next lessons to on, and the app will do the rest for you. Now, if you're not sure whether you're getting the most out of the lesson or not, well, if you follow our lesson checklists, you'll walk away knowing more of the language guaranteed. This premium PDF can be found inside the PDF download section of the lesson and gives you bonus tips to follow. Just print out the checklist and fill it out with every lesson. The word bank is kind of like your extended brain, where you can save words and phrases that you come across to the word bank, so you review them later. Just look for the word bank in the vocabulary menu on the site. But what's cool is you can also create printable study sheets for your words and phrases as well. Just click on Printer Friendly Version. You can also click Export Word Bank. If you've organized and labeled your words into categories, such as verbs and adjectives, you can select that label and export it as a PDF. Then print the file out. You can write on it and keep it as physical study material. So, if you want to learn the language and get access to these learning tools and our learning system, sign up for a free lifetime account right now. Just click the link in the description to get your free lifetime account. Great work, here's a reward. Speed up your language learning with our PDF lessons. Get all of our best PDF cheat sheets and eBooks for free. Just click the link in the description.